Hi, in the second installment of the Sitecore Headless Development Training Series, we're going to look at creating your first ASP.NET Core application using JSS SXA. I'm not going to go through how to actually create an ASP.NET Core application or tenant because Sitecore have created a sample template for you to create to use directly to create one. And the documentation is absolutely great. What I want to focus on is how do you utilize JSS SXA with ASP.NET Core? So let's get started. Firstly, why ASP.NET Core with JSS SXA? So what is JSS SXA? Per the definition of the Sitecore documentation, SXA lets you create JavaScript services, tenants, and sites that make it easier to work with JSS apps. The JSS tenants and sites help you scaffold your site and help you to import your JSS app in a structured way. The JSS integration with SXA enables SXA site management for JSS apps, cross-site presentation sharing using page designs and partial designs, cross-site content sharing, cross-site reusability of renderings, and cross-site linking. Within the new JSS documentation, it says why use SXA with JSS? SXA is a standalone accelerator for Sitecore. Additionally, it can be used to supercharge JSS apps. The SXA JSS integration was built to streamline building and managing multi-site scenarios with JSS technology stack. So in short, it's really about being able to create partial designs and page designs. Now, for you who don't know what partial designs and page designs are, they're an idea of how to structure your page in a way that's more reusable. For instance, in our example of creating the DoZen website, we have a header and footer that are common across all pages. What we want to be able to do is share these headers and footers. Now, there are two ways to do that, either through standard values where I can set these standard values. But the problem with that is, what if I change the header? I'm going to have to go through these standard values or, and change them if I want to change the component altogether or add a new component rather than changing pieces of the component itself. Partial designs make it easier for us to do that by defining these common shared partial designs. The second thing is, let's say our news article page. We want to provide a specific design for the page structure for it. We can do so through page designs and partial designs where we have one single view for it that can be assigned by default without having to go for standard values. The second thing is multi-site. And the idea here is if you want to share content between multi-sites, JSS tenants help you do that really well. Now, how do we do that? So by default, ASP.NET Core does not ship with JSS SXA or with its own tenant and site creation. I'm sure they will do that in the future, but until then, it's quite easy to actually do. All you need to do is change uh, the settings from Node.js server rendering to HTTP, add server-side rendering engine endpoint URL, change the associated app, and add placeholder for each of the placeholders in the layout. Let's go into Sitecore to see this live in action. So I have here, let me just zoom in so everyone can see. Uh, I have here my different sites. So I have my Duzan website and my Duzan website. This is a tenant and this is an actual ASP.NET Core rendering. Now, what I did was I created my own ASP.NET Core site here, just like JSS site under the JSS tenant. But I'm going to start off with a JSS site just to show you what you need to do rather than use my PowerShell command. And I'll probably share the PowerShell command later as well for people to use directly rather than having to do these manual steps. So now I created this site called training series. I'm going to put it in a virtual directory. And that's all pretty much all I need to do. The next step is once this is created, we're going to go in it and actually start changing some settings. So after I've created it like this, I'm going to go to this training series site, go to its settings, and then I should see here something called rendering. Rendering engine. I just need to change this from Node.js to HTTP and add the URL here for my endpoint, which is for our example, localhost 5000. So these are really the first step here is change it from Node.js to HTTP and add server side rendering engine endpoint URL. 
The next step here, which is really an important step, is we need to be able to have this app route work with our layout. Now, if we go into a bit more details here, by default, when you create a new JSS site, it has under it app routes, and this is how you create different pages. So let's say page one. Each of them inherit from a template called app route. Now, the second thing here that's really important is its layout. So if I open layout here, you can see that it inherits from JSS layout, or it uses JSS layout. The problem with this is that JSS layout is really a shared layout between all the different types. So if I show you here where it is, you can see that it's a shared layout across all of JSS Experience Accelerator within the foundation. We don't want that because this is where you ultimately will define your layout service placeholders for your main layout. What do I mean by that? We're going to have to go jump a bit further ahead of ourselves just to, for me to explain this, but I'm sure we can go through it. So by default here, you define your layout. And within that layout, you want to, and so this is just normal. So far, what I'm going through is just normal uh, ASP.NET Core. And then within that layout, you want, you want to create placeholders ultimately, right? So that's what we're going to do here, or what I'm going to show you how to do here. So by default, we have a controller and we have an index.cshtml, which is our default page. And within that, we have three placeholders. We have the header, the main, and the footer. So because these are the main placeholders, they should automatically be as part of the layout service placeholders here. So we ultimately need to go to the placeholder settings and create these placeholders and then select them in the layout service placeholders. But I don't want to do it as shared between everyone because again, we're thinking multi-site here. So we don't want one shared layout. So what I'm going to need to do is go to my project folder, my DevX site, and create my own layout here. Again, it's going to inherit from JSS layout and its path is going to be views JSS app.cshtml. And all I need to do is define its header, main, and footer because they're the ones that map to the names here, to the placeholder keys here. Once I do that, I just want to make sure that my app route has this as its default. So I'm going to go back here to my template, to standard values presentation details and make sure that I edit this JSS layout to be my newly created layout. So I would probably create it in the project layer like here, like so, instead of creating it in, um, in the foundation layer, because again, it's project specific. And that, there you have it. That's all you need to do to actually create or customize SXAJS has to be working uh, with uh, ASP.NET Core. The next step is, or the next uh, session in our next item on our agenda for our, for our series is, we're going to go through actually creating the master page or the rendering host, which I showed you briefly right now, but we're going to go into more details around it. And we'll understand more on how do we leverage this JSS SXA with um, ASP.NET Core. Thanks for watching.